Okay, this is a follow-up video to my previous video on uh, basically taking websites or web applications and making them at least act like native applications or look like native applications, I should say. They, to basically open them up, in this case, with Brave Browser without the toolbar and all the tools at the top, but just a floating window that has... Um, you know, a board, basic border and a bar at the top. I was told in the comments of my last video that with GNOME 3, GNOME 3 or GNOME 3, however you say, it doesn't matter, GNOME, GNOME, GNOME uh, Desktop 3 or higher, that you can't do this because um, the icons need to be set as launch. It's gonna say that it's untrusted. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at that. I'm going to, I've already created a desktop file. So again, a desktop file is a text file with the extension desktop that Linux looks at for most of their desktops as basically a shortcut link to applications. So I'm gonna download one uh, from my website. You can download it too if you want. It's at filmsbychris.com forward slash scripts forward slash 2023 forward slash fbk dot desktop. Uh, and I will download that and it appears on my desktop here. Now I want to show you real quick. I thought maybe at first you just need to change mod to make it executable. And although that does change something, it's still, it's grayed out and has an X next to it. If I try to click on it, it's going to tell me, uh, we have to enable launching. I'm going to hit close on that. I'm going to right click, say allow launching. And now I can click on it to open it. Okay, not a big deal. It is good practice to require permissions when you are launching, some, when you download something, instead of just having anything that's an executable, downloadable, you, when you download, just automatically ready to run. You know, like on a Windows machine, you download an exe file, you click on it, it's going to run. You download a bat file, a batch file, and you download it, you click on it, it runs. On Unix systems, you need to either unpackage it, or if you just download a script or an executable, you have to change mod it. For some reason, with the GNOME 3, they're making you go through two steps. Well, the change mod plus X isn't enough. When you right click and say allow launch, this isn't there anymore because I already clicked on it, it makes it executable. Uh, so it's kind of like a extra step there. And now let's go ahead and remove. I want to show you one other thing. Uh, if I remove that FBK desktop, if I was to download that same file, like so. So we're going to right click and say allow launch. So you don't have to click uh, add change mod to it, which is fine. Again, uh, it's a security thing, it kind of makes sense. But what if you are you have, have an installer application where you have a script that you want to install stuff and you want it to make an icon on the desktop? How do you go about this? Can you do it? Again, I already downloaded it and change modded it to make it executable and we knew that didn't work. Well, here I created a script, I'm going to run it and it's going to download the same desktop file to my home or to my desktop and made it executable. I have it create a, a random name each time so that I can show with other applications. But if I click on that, you can see that I didn't have to change mod it or right click and say launch. Let's go ahead and remove both those uh, those files, the FBK one and remove the, the other one that was 3187, right? So again, let's look at that. Let's go cat. I'll put this up. There should be a link in the description to this script. Uh, I'm creating a random name just so that each time I run it, it creates a, a random named desktop file, even though it's the same desktop file. It's downloading the desktop file, putting it in my home directory's desktop, and then naming it or whatever random number we generated up here. Then the, the, the trick here is using GIO. GIO, I don't know a whole lot about. It's uh, I think it's part of the uh, GNOME package or GNOME package. Uh, it's I know it can be used similar to XDG open to open up stuff with the default applications, but here we're using it to set that desktop file we just downloaded. We're setting its metadata to trusted equals true. And then we still need to make it executable. So it's a, it's a two-step process, but it's in the script. So again, I can run that install script and it will download and make it executable. I can run it again because it's generating a random name for the file. It will generate another one. Obviously, if I didn't, it would just override the last one. But there we go. It's creating my web application here as a local application, basically my website with uh, making it look like an application. So that is how you do that. Um, I do not normally use Ubuntu or GNOME 3. I am not that familiar with it. I tried Ubuntu, or however you say it, back in like 2008 for a couple of weeks. I was not a big fan. I'm not criticizing. If you like it, you like it. That's that's your business. I'm not going to go around bashing. But while we're on the topic of icons on the desktop and GNOME 3, in the half an hour I've been playing with this, just preparing to make this video, um, I noticed something really 
uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Now, I normally run, and this is this is me ranting a little bit. This is the tutorial's over. I hope you enjoyed that. I normally run i3. I don't like icon desktops. I barely go to my desktop. I run most things from the shell. It's just quicker. But I get that some people like icons on their desktop. And with GNOME, you have a desktop that has icons. Look, it comes with some icons here. But there's no easy way to create icons on the desktop. Look, if I right click, I can create a folder on my desktop. Okay, I can arrange the icons. I can sort them somehow. I can open it up in my default file manager because it's just a folder. I can, there's desktop icon settings. Maybe there's something in here I can change. I have not really looked through it. So I'm running in a virtual machine here. It's a little slow. Let's say I wanted to add Firefox. I can't just drag the Firefox icon over here. I can't right click it and say add to desktop. And again, there's nothing under this menu. So it's very, very weird to me that you would have a desktop that has desktop icons, but there's no quick and easy way to add them there. If there's another way to do it, uh, let me know, because the only way I know is by going to the shell and creating a desktop file. I'm sure there's gotta be another way, but I don't know what it is. Uh, and I just wanted to point out that I find that very weird. Again, I run a desktop and I don't have any icons on my desktop, so I get that, but I don't get why you would have a desktop that allows icons. And I get you have your favorites bar over here, or wherever they call it. It's just weird that it wouldn't be there. And I get they have the whole menu thing here, but that's 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 something different, right? I just found that weird and I thought, I, I'd complain about a little bit. Uh, I'm not bashing everything. Everyone's into their own thing. I just don't get why you would have a desktop with icons that you can't easily add shortcuts to applications on. I thank you for watching. Films by Chris.com. Check out the links in the description for my website, my Patreon page, uh, the example script I made here that creates those. Uh, again, I showed you what it looks like, right? Yep. So it looks like that. So that will be up on Pastebin, the link in the description. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.